Hello brothers, this is Christ. I had another question, Q&A. We're going to do another Q&A video. Okay. Get your King James Bibles out and follow along. We might turn to one or two, but to kind of keep these quick videos, uh, I've got big videos on more in-depth studies on this question. But the question for today, the question answers, where in the Bible does it say that God is a person? Singular. Where does it say that? That's a good question. All right. So the question, where in the Bible does it say God is a person? Let's get into this. Answer, if you believe that Jesus is God the Father manifest in the flesh, then it does call God a person. Okay. But does it actually specifically say God is a person? No, it doesn't say God is a person. But there's different ways of saying God. God has different titles. But the biggest thing here we're going to get into is, do you believe that Jesus is God the Father? The pagan trinity teaches that God the Father is not God the Son. They make Jesus a separate God from the Father. Two gods. Okay. There's no such thing as two gods. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. There's but one capital G, God the Father. And time and time again, if thou believest there's, if thou believest there's one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. There's only one God, the Father. Do you believe Jesus is God? No, he's not God the Father. I believe he's God, but he's not God the Father. It's a double-minded man who's unstable in all his ways. If he's not God the Father, and God the Father is the only one true God, then Jesus isn't God. Capital G God. They make him a lowercase g God. They start promoting a false Christ. Stay away from the Trinity, but we're going to get into this, okay? Explanation. Jesus is called a person four times in the Bible. And we're going to go over those four times. I'll turn to the first one, Matthew. Okay, turn to Matthew. Matthew 27. This isn't the first time, but we're, there's one in the Old Testament. We're going to use that last. But Matthew 27, 24. Pontius Pilate. What does Pontius Pilate say to Jesus Christ? About Jesus Christ. 27, 24. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person, referring to Jesus Christ. See ye to it. So you have Pontius Pilate says, okay, this is a person here. So Jesus is called a person in Matthew 27-24. Turn to 2 Corinthians 2.10. 2 Corinthians 2.10. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgave also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. Jesus Christ. Okay. That's the second mention of person. Turn to Hebrews 1.3. Here's the big controversial. Hebrews 1.3. Hebrews 1.3. This is talking about the Father. It's easy to see it's not talking about the Father. When you have someone who's clinging to fables that's spoiled by philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ, when they have a belief that's not backed by Scripture and they don't want to let it go, they'll pervert something that's so easy to see that this is talking about Jesus Christ. No, no, it's the Father. Let's read it. Hebrews 1.3. Hebrews 1.3. I want to turn there because I didn't. I said 3, but if I remember correctly. Yes, verse 2. Let's start at the very beginning. God, who had sundry times and in diverse, diverse manners, spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us, the body of Christ, by his Son, capital S Son, it's talking about Jesus Christ, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Remember, Jesus Christ, there's nothing made that was made by him. Who, be, who, talking about Jesus, being the brightness of his glory, his is the Father, glory still goes back to, to Jesus Christ. This shows ownership. Basically he's saying, this is my son, this is my body, this is my flesh. And the expressed image of his person. They'll say his person. It's, it's talking about God the Father. 
his person. When I say his truck, does the truck, is the truck the person? No. It shows ownership. His car, his book, his couch, his sweater. It shows ownership, but the sweater isn't me. His there is a reference to God the Father. Person there is a reference to Jesus Christ. He's talking about his son, verse 2. And he goes through talking about his son and who his son is to him. It's his, he's his glory. He's his person talking about Jesus Christ. And you keep reading and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Who's that talking about? Jesus Christ. Okay. But people that desperately want to hold on to something that's false and true will sit there and say, well, no, that's talking about the Father. And they, they, you can't deal with them. If they want the truth, it's here. They don't want the truth and they want to hold on to a pagan philosophy, a pagan belief, Trinity, there's nothing I can do. You're not a Bible believer. Okay? Bible believer will say, okay, wait a minute, I was wrong. I said Trinity in my past. I said God in three persons. I said God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, triune God. I got into it with, a, not got into it, but Facebook. Someone says, it's still a triune God. I looked at there and triune God still teaches that three are in one. The Bible says these three are one. One person. Just one. They are one. They, it does, the Bible does not teach three in one. That's the Trinity. The so-called triune God. That's paganism. Paganism. Okay. There's only one God. Body, soul, and spirit in, that are one. Not in one. Are one. They agree in one. But when it talks about their existence, they are one. They make up one person. Okay. Body, soul, and spirit. And the soul, God the Father, is God. Uh, let's get to the last one. The reason I've thought this is because it says His person in Hebrews. It's talking about Jesus Christ. Job 13, 7, will ye speak wickedly for God and talk deceitfully for him? Will ye accept his person? Who's that talking about? Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. The body of God, the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament. His person. Will you contend for God? Who contends for God today? There's one mediator between man and God, the man, Christ Jesus. So you got these four times where Jesus is referred to as a person. Do you believe Jesus is God? You say, well, yes, I do. Then you believe God is called a person in the Bible. That's how you know God's called a person in the Bible. But let's get to the next one. Jesus, do you believe the big question comes down to there's some false religions out there that like to claim Christianity, but they don't believe Jesus is God. They believe he's a created being. Uh, that he's he's created being like Satan. Some some false religions teach their brothers. Some teach that Jesus is just the archangel. I can't remember if it's Gabriel or uh, Michael. I think it's Gabriel. Uh, yeah, uh, man, manifest in the flesh. It's not God the Father manifest in the flesh. It's just an a, uh, Gabriel the angel manifest in the flesh. It's like it's garbage. It's Satanism repackaged, repackaged. Re it's just Satanism. Now we're going to go back to the question again. Where in the Bible does... Oh, I'm sorry, this is the next question. Where in the Bible did Jesus say, I am God? Because this is where it really comes down to. We showed four times where Jesus is called a person. So the only way you can believe that God is called a person is if you believe Jesus is God the Father manifest in the flesh. That He is God. Fully and completely. He's uh, The Godhead is, G is God the Father manif in Jesus Christ. And the person of Jesus Christ. I gotta say it right. The Godhead is God the Father in the person of Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible teaches. In Him, who's Him? Jesus Christ. Dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay? Where you got God the Father, you have Jesus Christ, and you got the Spirit, and these three are one. In Jesus Christ, they're one. People can't seem to get that. But here was the question. Let's get back to this brother, sister in Christ question. Where in the Bible did Jesus say, I am God? Now, in those specific words, it does not. And before I get into proving that he still claimed to be God, but just not in those specific words. 
Remember, they were always, he was always preaching parables. Why? Because if he flat out came out and said, I'm God manifest in the flesh, they would have killed him on the spot. And it wasn't his time yet. He needed to fulfill three and a half years. Why? Because that's God's timing. Some people try to compare it to, you know, different things in the Bible, like the time of Jacob's trouble, okay, where they, the Jews have to flee to the wilderness for three and a half years. There's certain numbers in the Bible that God does things His way, which is a whole other study. Okay. But if He flat out came out and said, I'm God, they would have crucified Him. And the times we're going to read about where He does come out and He, and he says, I'm God, without saying the word, I am God. But remember, there's many titles. Answer, in those specific words it does not, but we are commanded to follow 2 Timothy 2.15, rightly dividing. Explanation, there are titles for God other than to say God. There are all kinds of titles for God. Okay. Let's look at one of those. Why not ask, did Jesus ever say that he was I am? A title for God. Turn to John 8, 58. Jesus said unto them, and you can read the whole chapter if you want, the whole story where he's trying to preach to them that, hey, I'm the Messiah, I'm the Christ, I'm the Son of the living God, I'm here to rule and reign. But he's not flat out coming out and saying, I'm God manifest in the flesh. Okay. He's trying to tell them, and he finally gets to the point where it just, he tells them. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. He goes, oh, come on, that's not... Where do we get that from? We'll turn back to Exodus 3.13. I am. That's a title for God. Where do we get that title from God? For God. Exodus 3.13. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God, capital G God, of your fathers, has sent me unto you, they will say unto me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Verse 14, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent you to, has sent me to, unto you. I am has sent me unto you. That's a title for God. Did Jesus ever claim to be God? Absolutely. Use it, rightly dividing the word of truth. Did he actually say the words, I am God? No. But he claimed to be I am, and that's a title for God. Why not ask, where does God's word ever say Jesus is God? Remember, they're asking, where did Jesus say he was God? This is all God's word. Where does God's word say that Jesus is God? John 1.1. 1, 1. We already read this in the last study, but we're going to do it again. Uh, the other question answered. But John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the capital W Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Capital W Word was God. Capital W Word is another name for Jesus Christ. It's another title for Jesus Christ. Remember, there's only one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, and it's Jesus Christ. But he has titles too. Capital W Word. Lowercase w Word is the written word. The spoken word. Men in times past spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. God would speak to mankind through men by the Holy Ghost or through his Son. His flesh, his body. The Son of God. His capital W word. Two, the same was in the beginning with God. People say, well, this isn't Jesus. Let's keep reading. Beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was nothing made that was made. In him, him, talking about the capital W word, was life. And this life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness com comprehended it not. This is important, because some people might say, well, this is not Jesus. Now, we know that the capital W word is a reference to Jesus. Why? Because in John 17, 17, it says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Then in John 14, 6, it says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Remember what we read there? The light, the life was the light of men. Those is talking about the light of men, and there's life in that light in John 1.4, talking about the Word. We know it's talking about the Word. 
Then you turn to John 8, 12, it says, Then Jesus spake again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. We know in John 1, when it's talking about the Word, it's Jesus Christ. And it says the Word is God. It's with God the Father, and the Word is God the Father. Because there's only one capital G God, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, the Father. That is a big verse there. I point over here, but here. That was a big verse that totally debunks the Trinity. God the Father is not God the Son. Well, John 1, 1 through 1, 3, I think it is. God 1, 1 through 4. When you go 1, 1 through 4 through 5, we went all the way through first 5. When you read through that, it says He is. It says the Word was God, capital G God. There's only one capital G God, the Father. It says God, Jesus is God the Father. People can't seem to handle the Scriptures. These hardcore pagan Trinitarians can't handle the Word of God. They've got to depart from the Word of God and start preaching stuff like uh, personal. We went over four, the four times that Jesus called a person. They'll say, well, and I've heard brethren fail this too, and I've probably failed it in my past. They've been deceived into saying, well, the Holy Spirit has the qualities of a person. Uh, that, that doesn't define what a person is. Well, a person is someone who has the quality of a person. Well, a person is someone who looks like a person. Well, a person is someone who acts like a person. You still haven't defined what a person is. You see how that works in deceiving people? What's the definition of person? Stop telling me qualities of person, what a person does. Tell me what a person is. In the Holy Scripture, we did a word study in the word person. A person is someone in the Bible that has a body and a soul, and it's always referred to someone who is living. Spirit. You have to have a body, soul, and spirit to be a person. That's why animals aren't persons. They don't have a body, soul, and spirit. They got a body and a spirit, they don't have a soul. Mm -hmm. We, mankind, were made in the likeness of God. God has a body, soul, and spirit. God the Father is the soul. Jesus, the Son of God, God manifests in the flesh. Flesh, body, is the body. And you have the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. God is a spirit. Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit. We're made in His likeness. We have a body, soul, and spirit. But you have people will sit there and say, well, you know, He's got the qualities of, the, of a person. That doesn't define what a person is. Does the Holy Spirit have a body, soul, and spirit of His own? That's what defines a person. Don't let them deceive you, brother, says Christ, and getting you off on philosophy and, and the qualities of, of a person. The true definition of a person, body, soul, and spirit. Does God the Father have a body, soul, and spirit apart from Jesus Christ? No. Does the Holy Spirit have a body, soul, and spirit of His own apart from Jesus Christ? No. Jesus, does Jesus Christ have a body, soul, and spirit? Yes. God the Father is in Him. We're going to get to that verse. I don't want to get ahead. Ahead of myself. Uh, maybe, yeah, I don't want to get ahead of myself. But we're going to talk about one more time. Did Jesus say he was the Father referring to God? 1 Corinthians 8 6. Okay, only one capital G God, the Father. John 10 17 27. Maybe it's one where it says, I and my Father are one, but he talks about I'm in the Father and the Father in me. The whole God, the Father, the soul is in Jesus Christ. And the body is in the soul. They're connected, they're one. And they're perfect. When my body was, my wicked body of flesh was connected to my soul, anytime my body sinned, it tainted my soul. We're not perfect. He's perfect. Right? His body's perfect, and his soul is perfect, and they're connected. They are one. They are one, one person in Jesus Christ. John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And they follow me. I just want to throw that again. I'll read that again. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. The Bible talks about God sending the Comforter, and then Jesus says, I will be with you. Okay? But you have the Holy Spirit in you. 
If you have the Holy Spirit in you because the Holy Spirit is connected to Jesus Christ and your soul is now connected to Jesus Christ, that's why we're called the body of Christ, that's why you're, called, you're told that you're in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our soul is disconnected, that spiritual circumcision made without hands. Our body is no longer connected to our soul. Our soul is connected to Jesus Christ. You've got the Holy Spirit in you, you've got Jesus Christ in you. Okay. My sheep hear my voice. That's what you can tell some, some people that are part of clubs. Uh, they're putting on a show. They're trying to play Christian. Because there's times where we can be hard-headed. There's times where we, it takes us a little while for God to break through the hardness of our hearts sometimes. I understand I'm not calling everybody lost. I know brethren who believe in the Godhead of the King James Bible, but they still use pagan trinity terms and still are hardening their hearts and have no problem using pagan trinity terms because of the hardness of their heart. And I believe they're saved. They believe the truth. God's chipping away at them. But you've got some that are just hardcore Trinitarians, but they, they're not saved. They're part of a club. They're playing Christian. Okay, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And the deference is, brothers, because Christ is God will chip away the rocks of that heart. I've had brethren that, I, I always tell this story, I had a brother in Christ that really came down on me. If he was standing there, he'd probably spit flying, you know, come down hard. The Trinitarians important, or the Trinity is important, it's a fundamental doctrine, blah, there's nothing wrong, blah, blah, blah. And I showed him the truth. I was nice. I wasn't a jerk back. I didn't, you know, get mad and angry back and in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. I said, but the Word of God doesn't say it. Here's what the Word of God actually does say. And I witnessed to the man. And I didn't hear from him for a month or two. And then he came, comes back and says, you know what? You're right. I need to line up with the Bible. Not that, you're, not that I'm right, but I line up with the Bible. The only reason I'm right is because I was lining up with the Bible. Remember what I used to say? If I'm wrong, it's because I'm not lining up with this book. If I'm right, it's because I'm lining up with this book. But this book is always right. Brother says Christ, it's always right. And some are starting to doubt this book. Some are starting to turn on this book. But someone who's truly saved, I believe, God will get them around to the truth, break, chisel the rocks off the heart, if they have a hardened heart about it, and they'll get away from the pagan trinity terms and everything and stick with the King James Bible teaching that God, the Godhead is God in the person singular of Jesus Christ. It's not God in three persons. There is no capital G God, the Son, apart from the Father. There is no capital G God, the Holy Spirit. Okay? There's just one capital G God, the Father. And that Father is in Jesus Christ. We're going to read it here. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. The book. Today it's the book through the Holy Spirit. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand, the body. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand, the soul. Remember, your soul is greater than your body. This body is going to go into the grave. It's going to be, become nothing. My soul is what's, in, which is what's eternal. Where is your soul going to spend eternity? Heaven or hell? I pray it's heaven. But here it is, verse 30. I and my Father are one. Body and soul are one. If you're in Jesus' hand, you're in the Father's hand. If you're in the Father's hand, you're in Jesus' hand. They're one and the same. Why is it hard for some people to get this? Is Jesus claiming to be God the Father here? Absolutely. Here we have Jesus stating simply that God the Father and the Son of God... There is no God the Son. It's the Son, capital S, Son of God in the Bible, or capital S, Son of Man. When Jesus is referred to capital S, Son of Man, just a quick side note, he's talking about the kingdom of heaven, where his lineage goes through Mary, goes back to King David. Okay, his, his, his lineage, his mother's marriage to Joseph, when you, she becomes part of Joseph's family, and it goes through Joseph's lineage. Both sides, no matter how you look at it, go all the way back to King David. Capitalist Son of Man is talking about the kingdom of heaven, about Jesus being there to physically rule and reign as King, the Christ, the Son of the living God, the Messiah for the Jewish people. Capitalist Son of God is talking about Jesus Christ, who is God the Father, manifest in the flesh. He's got God the Father in him, that, the soul, 
Okay? His soul is God the Father. Are one and the same. Body and soul are one. If you are in the Father's hands, you are in Jesus' hands. If you are in Jesus' hands, you are in the Father's hands. They are one. And that the soul, God the Father, is greater than the body, Son of God, Jesus. The soul is always greater than the body. Okay? Remember what they did to Jesus Christ on the cross. They could never do that to the soul, to God the Father. But they crucified the flesh. God the Father sacrificed His body, His Son, capital S Son. The Bible says, feed the church of God, which He had purchased with His own blood. His own blood. Remember, His person, Jesus Christ. Sacrificed Jesus Christ on the cross. John 14, 8 Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Show us God the Father. Remember he asked P uh, Peter, who do you say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's your God manifest in the flesh. You're the Messiah. You're here to rule and reign. Verse 9, Now here you have Philip saith unto him, Show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Jesus says, You don't know me? Philip asked to see the Father, and Jesus goes, You don't know me? Well, I didn't ask to see the Son. I asked to see the Father. You don't know me? They're one and the same. He that hath seen, he that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Body and soul connected. You've seen Jesus Christ, you've seen the Father. You're in the Father's hand, you're in Jesus' hands. You're in Jesus' hand, you're in Why? Because they are one, are one, not three in one. That's paganism. I was told someone, if you have three cups into one cup, how many cups do you still have? How many cups do you have? Four cups. Cuckoo. These people can't seem to get it that are hard. Why? Because their heart is hardened. They don't want to let go of a pagan pagan belief. They don't want to let go of it. They don't want to line up with the scriptures. These three are one. How many do you have? One. These three are one. Body, soul, spirit. How many pe persons do you have? One. One person. They are one. That's what the Bible teaches. John 14, 8. We just said that would show us Father. Here you have Philip asking Jesus to show us the Father, and look how he responds. Have I been so long time with you, and yet has thou not known me? Jesus is saying, He and the Father are one. Okay. Jesus is God the Father manifest in the flesh. There's no denying it for a Bible believer. Someone who's an actual Bible believer versus somebody who is just being part of a club. You can still, Brother Jesus Christ, you can still notice that there's some people that want to be part of the Bible-believing club. Like this is a clubhouse or you have snakes trying to slither their way into places they don't belong. You have wolves in sheep's clothing. Okay? Trying to pretend like they're one of us. But you also have some of those that are just, I'm part of a club. They, don't act, they haven't actually given their heart, their life to Jesus Christ at the cross. They're just part of a club. Okay? For those of us who have given our lives to Jesus Christ, where this is now the final authority... Our true love for Jesus Christ is keeping His Word, hiding it in our hearts. Our true desire is to please God. There's no denying it for a Bible believer. And Jesus is the person of the Godhead. Body, Son of, equals Son of God. Soul, God the Father. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit. All these three are one. They're all, they're, all these three are there when you look at Jesus Christ. Remember? Yeah. Have thou not been with me, and have thou not known me, Philip? When you look at Jesus Christ, you're seeing the person of the Godhead. Jesus Christ is God fully and completely. Colossians 2.9, this is the one that gets the people, no, it's not, Colossians 2.9. For in him dwelt all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In him, all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. These three are one. In Jesus Christ. He's the person of the Godhead. Hebrews 1.3 Who being the brightness of His glory and the expressed image of His person. You want to see God? You look at Jesus Christ. You want to talk to God? You go through Jesus Christ. You want to talk to God the Father, the soul? You go through the body. The Son, Jesus Christ. 
That's why I keep quoting, there's one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. You go through the capital S, Son of God, the body of God. His Son, Jesus Christ. His image. You want to see God? You look at Jesus Christ. You want to talk to God? You talk to Jesus Christ. That's why when we pray, we pray to God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. Who being the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person. Remember, remember, just doing a quick question and answer. The two questions again. Where was God, God ever called a person? Well, capital G God is not called a person because capital G God, the Father, by Himself, is not a person apart from Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ who is God the Father manifest in the flesh that is a person. And then where does Jesus say He's God? Well, we showed, these are just a few. I could have done a lot, but this was just a few where Jesus says, but He's trying to be, He's trying to be, He's trying to preach truth without flat out coming and saying, I am God, because they would have stoned him on the spot. They would have killed him on the spot. He needed to preach for so, many, for so much time trying to give the people, because the religious leaders are the ones that would stone him on the spot. They'd rile the people up like they did for Pontius Pilate, and they would, they had, they would have had him crucified before his time. God had a set time. He had a set ministry, three and a half years, and God and Jesus Christ ministered and pro preached the kingdom of heaven for three and a half years. He gave the Jewish people a chance to accept him as a whole. Okay. But he did come out and say, I am God the Father. And that one time he said, before Abraham was, I am, they picked up stones to stone him. There's a couple other times where they do the same thing again. They're going to pick up stones to stone him. There was a time where they tried to crown him. You think, I, at first, I... I I don't want to get into it too much, but first I was like, why, why would he deny that? Because he's supposed to be the king and everything. Their heart was wrong. They weren't crowning him because he's the Christ, the Son of the living God, the Messiah. They were crowning him because he, he did all these miracles. And they were like, ooh, ah. But their heart wasn't in the right place. They didn't accept who he really was. They just saw some man that was doing some great miracles and everything. He's just any man. Any man they saw like that, they'd want to crown like a king, but they weren't looking at him the way Peter looked at him. Who do you say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Their heart wasn't in the right place. So, just a little quick question and answer. Okay? I don't mind questions. I love questions. In the comment section, in the emails, got questions, ask questions. If you disagree with something, ask questions away. I'll look through the scriptures and we'll find out where the Bible's right, and I'm wrong. I have no problem with that. I love questions. I love when brethren ask questions. Um, so we're going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Remember, this is the final authority. Not this. Not that. I'm pointing at you, brothers, says Christ. This is our final authority. This is what needs to be our foundation. I'll see you in the next video.